Um, Joseph Morrison, uh, during your time in WWE, when new people would have heat, is it usually more about them doing something wrong or just veterans giving them a hard time? Both. Both. Usually testing a guy just to fuck with them to see what kind of guy he is. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, midway through my time there when Matt Stryker um, came on board and he had just, you know, like I think the story had come out in GQ magazine how like this school teacher had been going to Japan moonlighting or been wrestling moonlighting or something and then got fired or something. And so he just got hired. And I always liked Matt Stryker. He was always a super cool guy. Um, and we were in Reno, Nevada. And this is when um, JBL had the title, the world title. And I'm not a gambler. I never have been. So I remember going down. We checked in. Uh, we were off the rest of that night. We had SmackDown the next night or the next day. And I was down in the in the in uh, one of the restaurants down there. And I was hanging out with Matt, you know, because he was the new guy. But we knew each other from beforehand. So he had just ordered his food. And I think I was just finishing up my food. But, you know, we're having drinks. And JBL comes into the restaurant and he's like, hey, Matt, how about we go play blackjack? And uh, now I was like, with all due respect, champ, I had ordered my food and I'm going to wait here and have my dinner. And JBL was already like a few beers in, right? So he's like, and he looks at me, he's like, hey, Paul, let's go play blackjack i was like i don't know how to play but let's go and he's like right answer and i just i genuinely wanted to go i was curious right um so when played blackjack well the next day i remember they they threw all of matt's stuff out of the locker room and made him change like in a janitor's closet or under the stairwell or something um and it just you know i mean that's just one example but you would see stuff like that quite a lot you know um so there were you know because when we were there there were a lot of guys who were guys who started off at kind of the tail end of the territory days and so they had been brought in or broken in in similar fashion. And I think, you know, I mean, I remember my very first day, uh, maybe not my first day. One of my first days on the road, we were in Indianapolis. And I had put my stuff. I'd gotten there real early to the building. And I put my stuff in a locker. And I went to the ring to work out. And as I came back in, a lot of the guys started coming in. And um, Bob, I had to give you a Bob story. Bob was sitting there um, where my stuff was. And he had put it, I want to say he put it in a different locker or something. Um. Anyways, so JBL came in and he was like, or I was like, hey, uh, do you know where my stuff was? You know, I was like, I introduced myself. I was respectful, but I was like, you know, I my stuff was there. He was like, are you accusing me of moving your stuff? Like, no, 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 And then and just like, then anybody that came in, he'd be like, hey, this new guy's accusing me, saying I moved his stuff. This, You know, and it was just like, oh, what the fuck is going on here? Like, I'm just asking, like, because you know clearly my shit wasn't in this locker anymore and you know so it was mostly to test people i felt because if you put it over and you made a big stink about it then it was just like fanning the flames you know but if you kind of just kept your cool and didn't sell into this shit and didn't give them you know ammo 
then they would find somebody else to fucking fuck with. So I thought a lot of it was just to test guys and to try and get a rise out of them and whatnot. And so, um, but there were a lot of dumb fucks too that went there and did a lot of stupid shit too, you know, and kind of brought it upon themselves. So, you know, old school etiquette, there's a lot of things that have maintained that should still be that way throughout the course of the industry's existence. But, you know, obviously, I would say more of it has changed to where it's safer and more inclusive and more uh, inviting to people. And there's, you know, call it bullying or whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, but but I always thought, well, if the guys I looked up to went through this, why should I be in way, you know, uh, in terms of just, you know, there's varying degrees of hazing, obviously. Like, I'm not talking about anything that should be done to you physically or sexually or anything fucked up like that. But in terms of just, you know, getting the locker room on you or trying to play ribs on you or whatever, I mean, it there's it's case by case i guess so wouldn't you say renee i mean etiquette's kind of a lost art but i think a lot of the timer guys that's what they were really going for was kind of see if you had respect yeah but some are just insecure little cunts yeah uh, there's that as well yeah yeah scare their spot Especially that country because a lot of people you think are safer or not. You know what I mean? I remember yeah. it really got, especially with the, the <clears throat> stock car racer when <laughs> when Rikishi got fired. That's when it was on all cylinders because if they fired Kishi, like, nobody was safe because everybody thought he was, like, you know, because he was yeah. really in, right? Yeah, so when they released him, the stock car racer got really paranoid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 